Welcome back, class, to Sentencing Sentences. We've talked so far about sentence variety, about consistent construction. Now we're going to work on incorporating quotes. And again, our objective is to use varied syntax and consistent construction to enhance meaning or style. So eventually we're going to get around to trying to use these things in our own writing. Incorporating quotes. Direct quotes are used when you incorporate another person's exact words into your own writing. Now why? Why would we want to do a good job at this? Many students don't smoothly incorporate their quotes. They just drop them in their writing into their writing as a freestanding quotation. This often results in incoherence and a loss of flow. So why? Should we do this? It will help your writing flow more seamlessly. Usually ensures that you have processed the outside material enough to make sense of it. Often people who use a freestanding quote don't even know what it means or haven't quite fully understood what it means. Sometimes it's not quite on target in terms of being evidence backing up your assertion. So how? Let's use the following quotation from the philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre. Man is condemned to be free because once thrown into the world, he is responsible for everything he does. It is up to you to give life meaning. Okay, so first the freestanding or bad way. Sartre asserts the individual's total responsibility for his or her life, period. Man is condemned to be free. Okay, a couple things here. This is MLA, which we use. Uh, notice, that actually, there are some good things about this, first of all. This is how you do uh, in-text citation. We've already said SART, so we don't need that here. We already have said SART in this basic vicinity. So we don't need to say that. We just need to get the page number here. The quotes come first, no punctuation here, no punctuation. Quotes come first, parenthetical citation, and then only later does the period or if it is in the middle of a sentence the comma. So this person is using correct MLA in-text citation. So that's good. And actually, their quote really does pretty much support the assertion that's made before. But still, this is not ideal. This is not ideal. We want to see that quote get incorporated uh, more into the writing of the actual student. Let's try some better ways that Sartre would be happier about. Use a simple introductory phrase. According to Sartre, comma, man is condemned to be free. And again, pay attention to the way MLA is set up here. No punctuation right there, even though this is the end of a sentence. We don't do that right there. Put our quotes there. Got our parenthetical citation letting us know what the page is. We already know that it's start. And then, and only then, do we put the period. Another way to do it, and these are basically moving up in sophistication, by the way. Not to say that you can't use the previous one or this one. Third one's actually going to be the most sophisticated. It's nice to have a variety of these, uh, but they're moving up in sophistication. The second one is use an independent clause and a colon. Sartre claims that the meaning of life is fundamentally ambiguous. Colon, it is up to you to give life meaning. End quotes, parenthetical citation, period. In his book, Existentialism and Human Emotions, Sartre made his famous proclamation, colon, man is condemned to be free. You got your parenthetical and a period. Get good at that. You'll be doing a lot of that. Here's the most sophisticated. Incorporate the quote into the context of your own sentence. This is where you need to Work this in so that it's in stride with your sentence structure. If we are, 
as Sartre claims, condemned to be free. Now here's, we haven't done this yet, where we have end quotes, then we have our parenthetical actually in the middle of a sentence. Then and only then does the punctuation come, because there is a pause there. Then we can never avoid responsibility for what becomes of us. And you, I hope you can kind of feel this, that the person writing this sentence knows more what they're talking about. Previous people, you know, they're dropping Sartre's words in there, and they sounded pretty smart. But you can see that incorporating this quote into the context of their own sentence, this person just sounds like they know what they're talking about. And they probably do a little bit more just because they've processed it more and thought about it a little bit more. Now this is really just picking the bare minimum of what you need from start to support what you're trying to say. Through the use of harsh language like condemned and thrown, I'm going to go ahead with my parenthetical right now, and a comma. Okay, that's actually a phrase up there, beginning with a phrase. We're also using some sentence variety here. Sartre emphasizes the anguish of man when confronted by the fact of his own freedom. And it's not to say, now, there's going to be some other ways of doing quotes. I, I hope that you've had some experience doing maybe black quotes when you have a longer quote that you want to incorporate. There's nothing wrong with that, having a longer quote. Because you, because what it is you're trying to show kind of unfolds over a longer period of time. That's fine. But I do think that these, these, this use of quotes shows that this person has really processed and, and is trying to make a point of their own. Really, this is talking about Sartre's use of language uh, in the book existentialism and human emotion so it's a it's a little bit more specific of a statement that they're making so this is definitely the most sophisticated incorporation of quotes in summary vary your sentences use consistent construction and incorporate quotes don't just drop them incorporate them. The end.